I'm Tommy from 1039 The Bear, and I'm uh, very fortunate to be with some great musicians. This band has been around a while, but they've been hammering it for a long, long time. I've got Anders and Bjorn of In Flames Gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, you guys got a brand new record, um, Sounds of a Playground. Where'd you guys do this at? Where what? what? Where'd you guys do the record at? Oh, uh, back home, man. Back home in Gothenburg. Gothenburg. Yeah. We, uh, we actually sold the studio. We owned the studio that we made the album in, man. But we sold the studio, so it was the last album ever made in that studio. <laughs> so you make the record and off the studio. Yes. Yeah. You gonna make a new one? Classic move. <laughs> Classic <laughs> move. <laughs> yeah. So it never can be repeated again. So. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, now tell me about. I mean, there's a lot of great studios in your part of the world as well. So why why did you guys do this record, sell a studio when there's? A, I always hear about these great studios in that area. The thing is, we uh, we. Are, been on tour so much and we're never home so that we cannot run a studio at the same time as being on the road and it, it will just be a you know a bad business decision to to keep in you know putting money in it on it while we can use it so talking business with in yeah, flames yeah, yeah. here yeah 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 that, according that. every three years or four years it's there's no business in that <laughs> excellent well you guys are doing with ropes you guys are kind of having the fans reach out for the video so you guys get a lot of footage we, we have tons of tons of footage uh, and uh, you know it's not easy to choose between all the different clips but uh, we have one guy making it for us and it's doing it great so yeah. well, I was gonna ask you do they actually make you sift through all the clips or does somebody else do that and you guys only see the good stuff or the topless girls pretty much the good stuff yeah somebody's sort of siphoning out all the or siphoning out the, the bad things and uh, now, is there still time for me to submit I caught you guys in the house of blues last year they, oh man you guys hammered it and I was like filming the crowd and I was like doing some research and going hey I got some footage well, on my phone right now man <laughs> I think it might be too late but since we met you you now maybe just submit it okay well, I'm, I'm gonna try and do that now um are you guys surprised about the outpour from your fans you guys when i saw the band and unfortunately i that was my first time and i know you guys have been doing this a long time but i love the band but i was also in, so impressed with your fans how they were just into it they knew every single song and they were right there all the way I think we have a very close connection to our fans, and we've been very open all the time, you know. And, and you know, it's it's it is important that you you treat your fans the right way. Otherwise, we would be home, you know, not being here at all. You know, they are the ones that are supporting us. They are the ones buying the albums. They are the ones going to the shows. And without them, we would be nothing. So, you know, and, and it is really really cool and honorable to to have them. Uh, and we get we got our own fan club called Jesterhead, and the, you know, it's it's going well. Well, I noticed you always had a great demeanor with the fans as well. I mean, when you spoke, they were waiting for it. And you just very soft-spoken and got it done. But, I mean, they really were waiting for you to say something, and then they were ready to hammer in the pit after that. Yeah, I, don't, I don't get that part. <laughs> it's good that they listen. <laughs> but even us, we're yeah. surprised. Every, every show we play, he always says something different. It's like, we're also, we're waiting too to see whatever he's going to say. It's really funny. Well, that's awesome that you get that different special night and you kind of accommodate to the room that you're in at the moment. It's important. I mean, every night's different. Even though we might play pretty much the same set out during a tour, what is different is whatever is being spoken on stage, the, the energy is being uh, exchanged and everything. So it, should, it should be an event as well. Otherwise, you can just be home, listen to the album. You know, I, I want the people there to feel that it's their night. Uh, and uh, you know, there's so many people watching these shows on YouTube, you know, but it's, I, I think for the ones who's there, it's got to be special. Uh. That's awesome. Now, you guys do a lot of festivals. I, I mean, you guys, I was looking at your tour schedule, and you've been doing massive festivals all the time. Being as good as you are and being in the business as long as you have, you got to be fans of it too. And so what is it about a music festival that excites you when you roll into town? Not, not even when you're playing, but as much as if you were to go to it. But it's really easy, you know, it's, you just come here, it's not your own show, you just show up, drink a bunch of beer, play, drink more beer, and then you, you <laughs> leave. A bunch of friends, see bands you like yourself, yeah. and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a great event. You know, it's not your own responsibility. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just really, really cool. So, and it, a good atmosphere, and it's for me uh, as, a, as a fan of music as well. I, I love to go into a festival because I can see so many different types of bands, different type of music. Uh, so, well, you mentioned beer. I gotta ask you, what's your favorite beer? Well, um, there's a. A uh, company called Great Divide in Colorado, which is doing really, really good beers. Uh, they have one uh, uh, called Yeti, which is uh, oh, the Yeti. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's it's an amazing, amazing beer, and they have a 
espresso oaked aged dietti, which is like one of the best beers ever. Nerd. <laughs> okay, now how about you, man? Uh, don't my, say Budweiser. Please. No, 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 no. Don't say Budweiser. You don't need to worry about that. My absolute favorite, still, even though we we know a lot of people that that are in the brewing industry, my favorite is still Sierra Nevada, the Paleo. It's still my favorite. Perfect with barbecuing. So. Yeah. All right. One last question here for both of you. When was that moment when you were a kid, and who was that band when you were going? You know, this is what I'm going to do. Well, uh, I was. I have no. I was. I don't know. There was a show uh, uh, on Swedish television, 1983, I think, uh, yeah. from from Dor Dortmund, uh, oh, and there was like Judas Priest, uh, Iron Maiden, Scorpions, oh, okay. Crocus, The Flatbird, uh, Ozzy Osbourne, blah, 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 some some I'm missing someone, whatever. And that was just like whoa. Oh, no, no, no. no wasn't that was very early. That was like a moment where I was like, <laughs> how about you? I'm just holding the, the the Holy Diver record, and right, yeah, it's that was when I knew I, I have no other plans in my life. This is what I want to do. Vivian Campbell was a great one too, man. You guys are great too. You and the other guitar player, you guys hammer it out live, man. I really enjoyed the tones when I saw you guys at the House of Blues. It was a tight sound. It was a great show, and uh, very excited to talk to you guys. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much, man. We've got Anders and Bjorn of In Flames. I'm Tommy. It's your Rock 1039 The Bear.